What is going on guys? It's the Budget Base Head. Welcome back to the channel. Right now what you guys are looking at is the Tang Bang three-way tower that I built. I dubbed it the Tang Bang three-way tower because it does consist of all Tang Bang products. All these drivers were sent over to me by Parts Express. Much thanks to them. There are links in the descriptions below if you guys want to check out these products later on. And just know that if you do make a purchase, you will be helping out the channel. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is from Tang Band's W2 lineup. This is the W2803SM. This is a 2 inch extended range driver. The mid bay solution is from Tang Band's W8 lineup. This is the W82096. This is an 8 inch underhung mid bass driver. And it's also a full ohm speaker. And for the sub bass solution, we have a product also by Tang Band's W8 lineup. This is the W81363SB. It's also an 8 inch subwoofer and is also 8 ohms, I mean 4 ohms. So, how am I testing this guy? Well, right now, if you guys look down here, you will see that I have a small board amplifier down here. And even though this guy is small, don't let it fool you, because it puts out plenty of power. This is from Shure Electronics. This is their AA-AB32281. Okay, this is a Class D amplifier, and it is two different inputs. It's a stereo board amplifier. It accepts from 18 up to 36 volts. It's being powered by this Meanwell NES350. This is a 24 volt at 14.6 amps. Rated at about, it's rated at about 350 watts. So this is powering this Okay, and if you're wondering what the output power of these guys is, it's two times 200. So it's input at two channels and it exit was output at 200 watts per channel, but you need the 36 volt power supply to do that. And this is only 24 volts. So I'm getting roughly about 100 volts. I'm about 100 watts, I'm sorry, of power. This is gonna be powering the the highs and the mids, okay? And the subwoofer is actually gonna be powered by this plate amplifier right here. This is how I'm testing this. I'm just running through this right quick to get you guys up to speed with what's going on, okay? So the signal is coming in from my tablet right here via this wire, three point five headphone jack and it goes down to here and it splits off into these RCA connectors. Okay, this is a plate amplifier by Dayton Audio. The way that this is going, I have one channel of this high imp high output going into the high input of the um, amplifier right here. So it goes into here and it goes out to the speakers. The SPA 250 plate amplifier actually has a, um, a, 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 a an internal crossover for your satellite speakers that can connect here. It does not let the low frequencies through, which is perfect for this setup that I have going right now. I forget exactly the crossover point, but it works for what I'm trying to do right here, okay? The subwoofer, there's two wires connect, uh, running out the rear of this plate, plate amplifier that actually connects to the W8 down here. And that's where he's getting his power from. Keep in mind that these channels do not amplify for satellite speakers. Only the subwoofer output from the rear of the plate amplifier amplifies a signal. These guys get it straight from here the way that it is, okay? 
I believe this thing have an internal crossover for the satellite speakers at about 80 hertz. I may be wrong with that. I should check that before I even tell you guys that. But I think that's what it is. Anyway, um, I am not running a full, the full uh, spectrum through this small speaker right here. What I'm doing, if I can pull this up for you, at the rear of the, the tower, I'm not gonna turn that thing around. At the rear of the tower, what I have is this, okay? So what is this? This is actually a terminal cup from one of my um, bookshelf speakers. The Dayton Audio MK402. I will leave a, uh, a link in the description below too if you guys wanna check out that bookshelf speaker, okay? This is from the MK402 lineup over at Dayton Audio, from Dayton Audio over at Parts Express. If you look at the rear of this, the rear of this actually have a crossover network built right in for that uh, that two-way setup. I'm only using the tweeter portion of that on this little guy, just to give it some protection. I think it's crossover right at 3000 hertz. And now that enough of the technical stuff is out of the way, oh yeah, I gotta also introduce you guys to the, to the Blue Snowball microphone. This is what I'm gonna be testing with right here, is the Blue Snowball microphone. I'm gonna be playing music through my tablet to this stereo amplifier. It's gonna be filtered the high pass of this amplifier into these two guys and out the rear of this is going to be amplification for this third guy so that's the test setup i'm gonna pause it and get right back with you guys okay so what i've done now is i've gone over to the YouTube audio library, and I'm just going to push play, and we're going to get some things recorded. It's really not doing, it's not pulling its weight, okay? I have the amplifier actually adjusted so that this guy right here pulls most of the bass, and I don't like that. Even though this thing is tuned, uh, it has a frequency response of around 27 to about 70 hertz or so that it does very, very well. This is a, for all the new guys who haven't seen this before, this, this bottom chamber here is actually uh, dual chambered internally. Okay, so you have, this is a uh, actually a uh, dual chambered uh, bass reflex, or what some would call a, a, um, a six order bass reflex. The fact that as a sealed unit, it is not outputting that tight, Base that I thought that it would be out outputting, and it is no fault of the driver itself. I chose to place this driver inside of a sealed enclosure where it's really not meant to be placed in a sealed enclosure. In my opinion, I didn't see any recommending uh, recommendations to put it in a sealed enclosure. And to be honest with you, with the frequency response all the way down to 30, 35 hertz, this thing has. A frequency response of 35 all the way up to 6,000 hertz is what it says on paper. Regardless if it can reach the 6,000 hertz or not, this thing with the frequency response that wide or that low, being able to get that low, probably should never be even be placed in a sealed enclosure. Not one of this, this small anyway. I just went with the recommendations over on Parts Express website. And to be honest with you, I don't like it. Uh, in this in this setup, uh, it's just not it's not outputting and complementing this guy and this guy as well as I think that it should. So what I am going to do is port this thing and to sh but but before I do that, I want you guys to know that I did test it with and without polyfill. Right now, it does have polyfill in it. This is uh, roughly 0.3 cubic feet. That's inside uh, internally, and it is stuffed with polyfill and it sounds better with the polyfill i must admit that i'm not going to give you guys a sound demonstration of polyfill versus non-polyfill just know that 
the changes are enough to be noticeable, but it's not really that big of a deal to me. It's not enough for me to say, oh, I won't port it. I'm still going to port it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a sound demo before and after of the port, you know, the port process. So what I went out and did is I actually purchased two one inch uh, PVC pipes and I'm going to put one here uh, and I'm going to put one here. I actually did some measurements and see that I actually can not achieve that much. I want to put a slot port on it the way that it is here. I don't really want two different port designs on one subwoofer, I mean, on one enclosure, to me it looks kind of tacky, but just for uh, uh, experimentation purposes, I'm gonna be doing it anyway. Um, but just know that it, this won't be the permanent build of this. I will not leave those two ports on there. As a matter of fact, I may not even do that anyway. I'm, I still may not even do that. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, you guys gave some good feedback on exactly how to remedy this problem. Uh, some of you guys actually uh, suggested to port through here. As a matter of fact, um, let me go and grab some of those names that helped me out with this. Okay, as you got, and I'm and I'm sorry, guys. I'm just right now, just really just pointing the camera at a screen. I should be screening, uh, recording this, but I'm not. But I just wanted to to, to look at look at some of the unique comments you guys gave me uh, from Steve Dressen. I hope I'm saying your name right, Steve Dressen one said port through the uh, tweeter chamber and maybe add the unused and maybe uh, add the unused volume to the mid chamber it will make it uh, it will make the porting job easier you might even be able to do two small ports one on each side to me that was that was very very innovative thinking the way that uh, the way that he said to utilize that uh, that tweeter port because if you guys would look at it and you guys will see next time I go back over there or if you look at the original video, the tweeter port is not, is the tweeter portion of the enclosure is not using all of that, um, of that space. So that would be an excellent idea to use right there, to be honest with you. And I think it was, uh, Midnight Oil or Midnight Owl 16, uh, right here. I hope I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying your name right, man. Uh, Midnight Owl 16 actually said the same thing. Pretty much just port up behind a tweeter, uh, enclosure and turn out the back however it's best to just start over and I you know I'm kind of not wanting to start over it, I'm just one of those guys man I'm just going to keep on going till I get it right I know that can waste some time but hey this is not really like for for sale or I'm not in like a, like a time crunch or anything like that I'm just having fun man and this is kind of like what I do on my own time right so that that's pretty much what that is but I just wanted to point you two guys out because uh, saying to port it from behind a tweeter, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of ingenious. And I do think that, uh, that someone else said the same thing. I think it was Michael, uh, Michael Wallace. I think that's, that's, that's who he said the exact same thing, which was, uh, port, port from the top through the tweet or maybe seal the sub or maybe balance, uh, through an EQ. That's all he can think of, but hey, that's good enough. You see these type of comments, man, that really helped me out a whole lot when I'm brainstorming, right? So uh, I really do appreciate you guys, and I'm just letting you know right here that I do go through here and look at you guys' comments. You know, it, it really, really means a lot when I come through here and see that you guys have written all this stuff, you know, just in response to a little video that I didn't put up. Makes me feel very, very, uh, make, makes me feel very, very good. I appreciate that. I just wanted to share that with you guys.